Happy Monday. Welcome to Powerful Days with Manny Cabrera. I'm your host, Manny Cabrera. Hope that you are having an amazing start to your week. Um, we are having a great time. It is uh, Monday, June the 19th. Um, I, if you don't know who I am, I, like I said before, my name is Manny Cabrera. I'm the chief instructor and co-founder of Sidekicks Family Martial Arts Center. We have two locations, one in the uh, fish out part of Hillsborough County and then one just across the county border in Tabasco in Wesley Chapel off of County Line Road. And so basically what we do at Sidekicks is we help people, both children and adults, to become better versions of themselves, both physically, intellectually, emotionally, and socially uh, through some pretty great programs such as kids martial arts training, uh, traditional martial arts for adults, a really great fitness kickboxing program, and an Israeli self-defense program called Krav Maga. So I'm excited to be with you guys today. This is my Monday through Friday show that's basically designed uh, to help you to get your mindset right so that you can be more successful, as well as to help you to be a better parent or more physically fit, or really just depends on what the topic of the day is. So today, though, I am really excited to talk about a, a great subject. Um, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and make sure that I am really doing a great uh, sound check. Looks like I'm okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about basically with this underlying philosophy of self-protect, uh, self-perfection rather, um, behind the martial arts that we practice here at Sidekicks. So before we go into that though, if you are here and you're online with me, just uh, hit the like or hit the share button and uh, share it to your wall and let me know that you're here in the comment section. I'm really excited to be online with you guys today uh, because this is a really great subject. This is something that um, I focused on for, you know, in my life for, you know, going on now 30 years. I mean, I've been doing martial arts since I was very, very young, and I'm excited to uh, be talking about this subject because it's kind of the foundational principle that guides everything that we do, not just as a business at Sidekicks, but also through our martial arts training here as well. So uh, we're going to give everybody a couple more seconds to jump online with us, but like I said, uh, if you could go ahead and do me a solid, hit the share button, put this on your wall, let other people know, um, you know that we are here and that this is some great information for them. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to be talking to today about today is, like I said, is the underlying philosophy of self-perfection, and uh, it's a pretty great topic. You know, a lot of people think that martial arts is just about either self-defense or that it's just about fighting, but that's not exactly what the martial arts is all about, uh, or at least it's not the only thing that the martial arts is all about. Uh, uh, there are, you know, there's kind of a greater, you know, greater... Uh, cloud to the whole thing and self-defense and being able to fight is just one aspect of it and because it's a it's an aspect of what we're doing um you know it's in self-perfection perfection being the ultimate goal uh over here being really good at defending ourselves being really good fighters kickers punchers are all part of that entire process so i'm excited about this topic to be with you guys um, at any time, if you have any questions, just drop them down in the comments, and I'd be happy to talk about them with you. So before we can really get to this, you know, what the philosophy of self-perfection is, I want to give you guys a little bit of a history lesson. And it's not actually a martial arts history les lesson. It's actually a business and manufacturing kind of lesson. So um, back at the end of World War II, um, there was a guy, and his name was uh, William Edwards Deming, or he went by professionally, it was W. Edwards Deming or Dr. Deming. And essentially what he was is he was uh, an electrical engineer, he was a math consultant, um, and he came up with this philosophy uh, you know, in order to create a zero defect environment um, for manufacturing. And he, you know, he, he created a process that was based on some research from a, a predecessor of his. And it was, you know, the whole goal was is was to design better products and to improve service. Um, to create a higher level of uniformity in product quality, um, and it was you know to improve you know product testing and you know in the workplace, and so that you know products would get better and better, and, and you would you know ultimately companies would make more money, and you know there was this entire thing. Um, but he originally shopped it around in the United States, you know, around the time that World War II ended, and really didn't get anywhere with it because. And in, in, in the words of, you know, most of the, you know, companies at the time, you know, America was on top. Why did they need to be better at, at what they were doing? Because they were, you know, they were number one. 
So actually, he actually took this, you know, manufacturing concept and shopped it to companies in Japan who were just, you know, recently getting over uh, being devastated by, um, you know, the, the effects of World War II, um, primarily because, like, during World War II, they used up, you know, the vast majority of their resources, you know, in basically trying to take over other lands so they could have the resources they could continue. And then also... And the same in the same vein, Japanese products had a reputation for basically being junk, um, and so he shopped around in places like Honda and Toyota and um, Sony, and they basically took to this philosophy in a major way. And in fact, they adopted it and they called the concept Kaizen uh, for our purposes in our martial art at Sidekicks because we practice our base system as a Korean martial art. We actually translated to. Um, we translate it to what's called Chung Shil. Um, and so the idea of Kaizen uh, essentially comes down to this theory of what we call constant and never ending improvement. Um, and so it basically, the whole pro intention of the process is that every cycle, you're always trying to make continuous improvement. From a manufacturing standpoint, it essentially took the entire manufacturing process and placed improvement, the improvement and the defect process, not in some off site you know, uh, uh, quality assurance type of situation, um, although that was part of the process as well, but it really, it took it and placed it on the frontline employees. And if they were able to figure out a way to improve something, they were given the power to improve it if it, let, if it you know, um, lowered the cost of manufacturing as well as created the opportunity for, um, you know, better efficiency and lowered the defect rate. And so they were given a lot of, you know, uh, you know, authority to be able to go and, and create that process in Japan. And then fast forward, you know, 40 or 50 years later and Honda and Toyota and other Japanese, you know, and, and Sony and other Japanese companies are, you know, major, major players and in many ways kicking American companies' butts, um, you know, in the, the manufacturing market, especially in the case of like cars and electronics. So uh, taking this idea of constant and every improvement really, in, you know, it's kind of at some point stepped outside of manufacturing and started also being able to be applied to, you know, people's everyday lives. And so we adopted it, you know, uh, many, many years ago as part of our martial arts philosophy, as part of the fundamental thing um, of our martial arts program so that students could not just improve their martial arts quality, improve their martial arts acumen, but also so they can improve their lives. Because ultimately, um, the martial arts is not just a physical thing, but it's about self-perfection. And so it's, you know, as part of that, because self-perfection is the goal, over here in the corner of self-protection, such as the self-defense aspect of martial arts and the physical aspect of martial arts, the goal here is, is to continuously get better at it. So for all of our martial arts students, you know, self-defense is always going to be a big part of it simply because as martial artists, we just can't stand to be any other way than really good at what we do. Um, <clears throat> doesn't mean that we're going out there, we're going to be the best athlete right out the bat, but that our students and that our instructors and that our, you know, anybody that trains in martial arts with us is going to be committed to that process of becoming the best version of themselves that they possibly can be. So it's a really great, you know, really great concept um, and then, you know, so that, you know, students can develop their individual, you know, mental and physical state, you know, through this highly stylized and deliberate method of martial arts training. And so they're, they develop that empowering sense of self-worth and the ability to, you know, control your state and physical destiny, you know, through the martial arts training. And so it's, it's something that uh, personally, as a martial artist... Um, has enabled me to go through and do well, not just in school, but to do well in martial arts and really anything that I have ever attempted, um, like, you know, uh, uh, operating a martial arts school to develop that process into becoming the best version of my own self. So it's been a pretty cool, pretty cool thing. And so the whole thing comes down to what is kind of known as the Deming cycle or, you know, the Kaizen cycle or the, or, you know, what they call the you know, the, the philosophy of personal improvement. And so let's go ahead and let's talk about the Deming cycle. So really this Deming cycle has four parts. It's really simple. It's PDCA. All right. So it's plan, do, check, act. And so what this does is it gives you the opportunity 
to create constant feedback and course corrections on the way to whatever it is that your goal is. So the first step in becoming successful in the martial arts or in life or whatever it is, is to first you got to really know what it is that you want and, and know what you want with a huge amount of certainty. And so in the case of martial arts, you know, our ultimate goal for people is to earn their black belt because we know that by the time they earn their black belt that they have accomplished all of the things that we believe that martial arts should accomplish for somebody have kind of gone through the process for a student. This is, this is you know, through the journey of self-discovery, the physical training, the fitness training, the personal development, self-defense, the whole bit. Partly because our curriculum develops it in a step-by-step -step process every, you know, step of the way. But also, and this is more important, because as the instructors, we won't let somebody earn their black belt unless we believe that they have overcome their own personal limitations, that they've overcome their, <coughs> pardon me, they've overcome their, you know, upper limit problems. All of those things have, you know, gone through a process of development and, you know, so that they can earn their black belt. But the first step is, is after you know what it is that you want, you got to plan. You got to kind of okay, how is it that I'm going to get there? Conveniently, you know, in, in the case of a martial artist, you know, training in a place like Sidekicks, you know, we already have a curriculum, you know, from beginning until you're a master level instructor as far as what it is that we want our students to accomplish. And so it's a clear step by step, you know, process. So it is. You know, a long-term goal made up of short-term attainable, you know, medium-sized goals that are made up of short-term attainable steps in each step of the process so that all along the way, you can see the progress towards the goal, which from a, you know, a mental and emotional state is a plus because then it means that the student or it means that the person that's going after their goal is going to be more apt to reach their goal because they feel like they're making progress. They see their progress. They know that they're reaching whatever benchmarks and short-term goals that are attainable rather than just trying to hit a target that's out there somewhere in the middle of, uh, of the future. So that's the plan. But we all know that all plans are, are good, but they're not anything if it doesn't have some sort of action to go along with it. So once you kind of develop the plan for the goal, then you take action. You go after it. This is the do part. You do the thing. You go out and you practice. You train. You you um, you take the steps towards the goal. You actually start that new business. You, you know, get the continuing education that you're looking for. Whatever that process is for you, that's what you're going and doing at that time. But along the way, we may notice that, you know what, our plan isn't going out. We're not getting the most results that we can. We're not getting, we're not going to wherever it is that we want to go in quite the way that we hoped. Well, at that point, that's when we got to check our results. <coughs> um, uh, um, motivational speaker Anthony Robbins calls this sensory acuity. And that's basically where you use all of your senses, you use all of your data, all of your sensory data, everything, in order to check your progress, to see where it is that you're making the mistakes. This is where we look for the defects in the manufacturing process to eliminate those things. Well, what is it that we were doing that was creating this issue that is setting us back, that's helping us, keeping us from reaching our goals? Maybe it's diet. Maybe it's something as far as your, your mental... Um, you know, your, your mental, your mindset, maybe it's, you know, you're just, you're a technical thing, you're doing a technique wrong, or maybe you're not getting enough practice, or whatever the situation is, and all of those may be relating to martial arts, but all of those things also relate to what it is that you're doing if you're trying to get a college degree, or you're trying to start a new business, or you're raising children, or whatever, it, you know, the process is, is actually irrelevant. The philosophy here of what you're trying to do and apply remains the same. And so this is really great because, you know, we're using what we learn in the martial arts now with children. We're helping them to use what they learn in the martial arts and apply it to how they do their homework and how they work on projects at school and how they get better at handwriting as well as cleaning their room or, you know, doing chores or the relationships with their family. All of those things we're creating a framework for them to develop over time into these great and amazing people, which is ultimately with the martial arts in my opinion at least is all about it's about creating people who self-actualize so after you kind of check your work you've seen how things are going well then you act again you adjust based on your data and then you hit it again so there's a really great 
you know, lesson in there that just because you encounter resistance or you don't get the result that you want the first time, well, we're teaching children through our martial arts program. We're teaching adults through our martial arts program as well, um, you know, because maybe they didn't get those lessons the first time around to not just give up, but to overcome obstacles, to overcome challenges, to break through to that next level and to become the person that they, you know, know that they can be so that they're leaving ha leading happier, healthier, better lives that are, you know, and reaching their freedom. I think it's a really great concept and it gives them the opportunity to create that um, feedback and course correct so that the certainty of achieving a goal is all but uh, all but assured because they're not going to stop. They're not going to quit. They're continuously improving. The great thing, and I, this is something that I tell our teenagers a lot of a lot of times, is that the great challenge of your life is to find out how high the sky is. And what I mean by that is, is you know, there's no limit to what their capacity is for achievement. Um, you know, every Olympics, people are breaking new records. They're you know, achieving new things physically in which proves that, you know, the human body has almost limitless potential. So wouldn't your mind and the things that you can achieve and accomplish and do also have limitless potential? <coughs> one of my favorite uh, concepts or one of my favorite, um, you know, ideas is that you can actually, they, they, we went from the Wright brothers in like 1901 or 1902 uh, the very first flight, you know, in, at Kitty Hawk in North Carolina, um, you know, the very first airplane to ever take off, you know, and, and sustain its flight on its own to landing a person on the moon in just over 60 years. That's a really incredible achievement. We went from basically falling off of things to launching people into space and then not just launching people into space setting foot on other planetary objects. That's pretty incredible. And I mean, it, it, it's a testament to the human spirit. It's a testament to our ability to accomplish things. And it's that same philosophy. It's that same spirit. It's that same, you know, go get itness. that same grit that people use every single day, you know, training in our martial arts programs to become better kickers, to become better physically, to become better mentally, to develop better focus, to become more confident. All of those things um, are achieved. And this philosophy of, um, you know, constant never-ending improvement or chung shil, as we call it um, in our program, you know, is the foundational thing that kind of helps the human spirit to, you know, really find out what it is the next generation of scientists, the next generation of, you know, leaders, the next generation of, um, thinkers and writers and poets and mathematicians and chemists and all of those things are so that we can continue to push our society forward. And it's only by working for improvement, ultimately, you know, as a collective, um, are we going to really help people to live out their best life? And that's what I want, you know, for our community. And it's one of my big goals in the martial arts and it's one of my big goals for sidekicks is to help people to become the best version of themselves. So that's basically what I have for you guys today. This is that is the secret. That is the cycle. Um, you know, plan, do, check, check and act or adjust. You know, on the fly. But it's once you figured it out, it's you got to take the action. And then you got to adjust based on the results that you're getting so that you can take more action and then adjust based on the results that you're getting and then take more action so that you can achieve those results that you're looking for. Um, again, my name is Manny Cabrera. This has been Powerful Days with Manny Cabrera. And I want you guys to make it a powerful day that's intentional. How are you going to go out and use this process of plan, do, check, act in order to make small, continuous improvements over time? Because you know what? One of the things that I use, because when we're dealing with children... You know, obviously, um, you got to kind of make things down to the root idea. And I tell them a lot of times, you know, if I were able to make this much improvement over the course of 30 days, after 30 days, I would have this much improvement. And so if I was making that much improvement, I could do anything, couldn't I? And so that's the idea is that small, continuous improvements over time, that's how you achieve those big results. It's those, as we talk about in uh, some of my consulting businesses, um, it's the small hinges that swing those big doors. 
And so I hope that you have an amazing day, and I hope that this is useful. If you found this information of use to you guys, please do me a solid and share it on your wall or send it in a message. But give me some hearts, give me some likes, give me some love, <coughs> and let me know that this was something that you enjoyed. Make it a powerful day, guys.